The last minutes of Jules Bianchi's life are a haunting chapter in Formula One history, a story of speed, triumph, and an unforeseen turn that changed the sport forever. But what happened in the last horrifying minutes of his life during the Japanese Grand Prix in 2014? How did a promising career turn into an unthinkable tragedy? Join us as we unravel the twists of fate, explore the impact of crucial decisions, and understand the legacy that Jules Bianchi left behind. Born on August 3, 1989 in Nice, France, Jules was destined for the world of motorsport, inheriting a racing legacy from his grandfather, Mauro Bianchi, a successful driver in the 1960s. The racing genes ran deep in his family, as he was also the grandnephew of Luciano Bianchi, a respected figure in Formula One. Jules' journey began at the tender age of three when he first touched the pedals of a cart on his family's track. Fueled by a passion for speed, he quickly became addicted to the thrill of racing. Progressing through the ranks, he achieved remarkable success in the French and European Junior Championships in 2004. In 2008, Jules made the transition to the competitive French Formula Renault 2.0, winning the championship with sensational victories. His prowess continued in the Formula 3 Euro Series, where he secured a third-place finish in the overall standings in 2008. Recognizing his talent, Ferrari recruited him into their prestigious Formula 1 Young Driver program, setting the stage for his ascent to the pinnacle of motorsport. The year 2012 saw Jules loaned to the Sahara Force India team by Ferrari, where he embraced the role of test and reserve driver. Demonstrating skill and dedication in Friday free practice sessions, he made a seamless transition from GP2 to Formula One. Debuting at the Australian Grand Prix, Jules showcased his talent with a notable 15th place finish. The Monaco Grand Prix in 2013 marked a pivotal moment for Bianchi as he piloted the Marussia car to a remarkable ninth place finish earning the team its first-ever World Championship points. This outstanding performance earned him the title of Autosport Rookie of the Year, solidifying his reputation as a rising star in the world of Formula One. As the 2014 season unfolded, Jules Bianchi faced challenges and retirements but consistently outperformed his teammates, displaying resilience and unwavering determination. Jules Bianchi expressed his eagerness to join Ferrari amid rumors of Fernando Alonso leaving for McLaren. However, the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka, under Typhoon Fanfone's threat, was red flagged due to tumultuous weather conditions, halting proceedings for three days. Bianchi had been working towards joining Ferrari since 2009. Despite the challenging weather, the race resumed after a pause. The track remained soaked and slippery from the heavy rainfall, presenting a new set of difficulties for the drivers. Disaster struck on lap 43 in the S-curve section of the track. A semi-dry racing line existed, but as the cars reached the Dunlop curve, the racing line narrowed due to flowing water onto the track. Adrien Sudil encountered this flowing water, lost control of his car, and collided with the retaining wall. While Sutil escaped unharmed, his car needed recovery. Track marshals and a recovery vehicle were dispatched to clear debris and move the damaged car to a safe location. To ensure safety, double-waved yellow flags were displayed, signaling drivers to reduce the speed and be prepared to stop with overtaking prohibited. So then, what decisions and circumstances conspired against Jules Bianchi in the tense moments of the Japanese Grand Prix, blurring the line between victory and disaster? Jules Bianchi, who had been ahead of Sutil when he swerved off, returned to the scene one lap later. Despite being shown double-waved yellow flags indicating danger, Bianchi did not sufficiently slow down. As he approached the patch of water that caused Sutil's incident, he lost control of his car, overcorrected, and veered off towards the recovery operation. In the final moments, Bianchi's attempts to avoid the recovery vehicle were hindered by locked front wheels and a throttle that failed to shut off due to an incompatible brake-by-wire system. Distractions and the lack of proper responses led to a tragic collision between Bianchi's Marussia car and the recovery vehicle, resulting in minimal reduction in speed and catastrophic consequences. The collision between Jules Bianchi's Marussia car and the recovery vehicle during the Japanese Grand Prix unleashed a force so powerful that the crane itself was partially lifted off the ground. Adrian Sutil's car, suspended by the crane, plummeted back to the track. The impact caused substantial damage to Bianchi's composite chassis car, ripping off the roll hoop and airbox, ultimately striking Bianchi's helmet. 
The magnitude of the blow and its glancing nature resulted in massive head deceleration and angular acceleration, leading to severe injuries. Unconscious and unresponsive to communications via team radio, Bianchi received immediate attention at the crash site. Swiftly transported by ambulance to the Suzuka Circuits Medical Center, adverse weather conditions ruled out helicopter transport. Under police escort, Bianchi was taken to the nearest hospital in Yokaichi, approximately 9.3 miles away from the Suzuka Circuit. Bianchi's father, in subsequent reports, indicated the seriousness of the situation, explaining that Jules had suffered a diffuse axonal injury. A successful three-hour operation was performed on his brain to alleviate a subdural hematoma. In the days following the incident, FIA medical delegate Matteo Bonaccini announced that Bianchi remained in a critical but stable condition. Diffuse axonal injuries, a serious form of traumatic brain injury, often have a low survival rate, with many survivors facing long-term issues even after rehabilitation. Bianchi's father, in the week starting October 13, 2014, provided an update describing Bianchi's condition as desperate. Miraculously, Jules survived, despite the grim prognosis. His father found hope in the recovery of Michael Schumacher, whom Bianchi had admired as a childhood hero. However, Bianchi's condition remained critical yet stable, requiring a medical ventilator. In November 2014, he emerged from his induced coma, showing signs of improvement by starting to breathe without assistance. This improvement allowed his transfer to France, closer to his family, though still in a critical state. Bianchi's father shared the challenges they faced and the constant vigil they maintained at his bedside. Tragically, on July 17, 2015, at the age of 25, Jules Bianchi passed away. His family expressed the immense and indescribable pain they felt, noting that Jules fought right to the very end. His passing marked a somber milestone as he became the first Formula One driver to lose his life from injuries sustained in a Grand Prix since the tragic loss of Ayrton Senna in 1994. The funeral service at Nice Cathedral on July 21, 2015, saw a multitude of drivers, past and present, paying their respects. In the aftermath of his passing, the FIA announced that car number 17 would no longer be used in the Formula One World Championship as a mark of respect to Jules Bianchi, leaving an enduring legacy in the hearts of the racing world. Current Formula One sensation, Charles Leclerc was profoundly affected by the heartbreaking loss of his godfather, Jules Bianchi. Their connection transcended mentorship, shaping Leclerc's career in unforeseen ways. In the early days of Leclerc's junior racing career, financial constraints threatened to derail his dream of becoming a racing driver. It was then that Jules Bianchi, a guardian angel and godfather, stepped in to provide crucial support. In 2011, I had to quit motorsport because my father unfortunately no longer had the means to pay for my career, Charles recalled, his voice filled with gratitude. But luckily, there was Jules, who was my godfather, who helped me a lot. Bernie Ecclestone, Formula One Group CEO, expressed sorrow over Bianchi's passing, acknowledging the loss of a talented driver and a genuinely kind person. He emphasized the need to prevent such tragedies from occurring again in the future. In May 2016, the Bianchi family announced their intention to pursue legal action against the FIA, Bianchi's former Marussia team, and Bernie Ecclestone's Formula One group. Seeking justice for Jules, the family aimed to establish the truth about the decisions that led to the crash at the Japanese Grand Prix in 2014. The aftermath of Jules Bianchi's tragic accident prompted the FIA to launch an immediate investigation and explore potential safety improvements. The FIA's report outlined contributing factors, including track conditions, car speed, and the presence of the recovery vehicle on the circuit. While the FIA recommended safety enhancements for the recovery of stricken vehicles, it concluded that modifying the cockpit design would not have prevented Bianchi's injuries. Despite Marussia not being held accountable for the accident, the incident marked a turning point in Formula One safety protocols. In the 2015 season, the FIA introduced regulations specifying that no race could start less than four hours before sunset or dusk, impacting the start times of several Grand Prix races. Significant safety measures were implemented, including the virtual safety car and the controversial Halo device. The Halo, introduced in 2018, aimed to enhance driver protection and minimize risks on the track. 
However, the FIA's evaluation indicated that the halo wouldn't have saved Julius Bianchi in his tragic accident. The assessment was grounded in the understanding that the halo might not have maintained its structural integrity against the substantial lateral forces during the impact. Considering the severe impact, the entire roll hoop of Bianchi's car was sheared off, including the airbox, contributing to the tragic outcome. Fortunately, the halo has proven to be a life-saving innovation since its introduction. A remarkable incident illustrating the effectiveness of the halo occurred during the 2020 Bahrain Grand Prix, involving Romain Grosjean. Grosjean stated, Jules Bianchi saved my life thanks to the halo, and I was absolutely against its introduction. What an idiot I was. Jules saved my life and the lives of other drivers, and I will always be grateful to him for that. Following Grosjean's crash, Jules Bianchi's mother expressed the significance of the halo in a heartfelt message. She emphasized how glad she was that this innovation saved Grosjean's life in the accident. Despite his life being tragically cut short, Jules Bianchi's legacy continues to live on in the hearts of millions in the world of motorsport.